welcome to the Top Advisor Marketing Podcast brought to you by Proudmouth. I'm your host, Matt Halloran. Being your own loud is not new to marketing, but the mindset, strategies, and resources to help you get there are evolving faster than this industry is keeping up. It is time to find a new perspective on what works why and how to move your business forward. Listen as I interview guests to help you learn from them how to be your own loud. Let's get to the show. Hello and welcome to another Top Advisor Marketing Podcast. I love content people, and I love content people because we are all in the same game. Content marketing is the only marketing that's left. Johnny Sanquist is our guest today. He's the founder of, let's see, uh, so it is Three Crowns is the name. I got to find out more about what that means. I have still been trying to figure <laughs> out your brand, brother. But here's the deal. they, He and his organization, it's not just him, but his organization really does unbelievable content for fintech he's a marketing strategist for ria so you all who are listening you know he works with all of you who are listening and so we're going to find out a little bit more about what makes him tick and what makes him unique and different johnny welcome to the show thanks matt super excited to talk to you all right brother let's start off not necessarily at the beginning like you know i was born blankety blank but i want to know a little bit about your journey like why are you in financial services how did that happen and then i'm going to start asking you questions about your philosophy so um, I will preface everything I say with, I am an accidental marketer. I'm an accidental financial services veteran. I'm an accidental business owner. So the, the journey is long and there are many winding roads, but we'll go through it, okay? So um, I'll, I'll start you off here. Um, fresh out of college, I was working at a, a, a very tiny regional business newspaper, and I had some friends who worked at Orion Advisor Technology with, I know a lot of people listening will know Orion, a uh, fantastic software company for advisors. So I had some friends working over there and they were like, hey, uh, why don't you apply? We're hiring like crazy. And you know, you'll make like a dollar more an hour than you make right now. And you know, I was like 22. I was like, that sounds amazing. Let's, let's go for this. So I got hired at Orion. Um, and, uh, worked on the, the onboarding team, which is where I first learned what an advisor is, what an RIA is, what an IAR is, what an IRA is, all of these things. I had zero, zero financial background. Cause I was a, I was a British lit guy. So, you know, I was reading poetry from 1600s before I started in finance. Um, but just fell in love with it, man. Like started to build good relationships, you know, as an onboarding person, I started working with just tons of different advisory firms, just started learning about business uh, and, and, and got into it and stayed in it. Um, and uh, from there, you know, I, as I grew in the company, I began to uh, make overtures to the leadership of like, Hey, I'm actually a better writer than a tech support person. You know, that's kind of my background. So eventually I moved over to the marketing team where I was uh, the content uh, creator, content writer. And as luck would have it, um, my boss at the time, Judd Mackerel, uh, decided to create his own marketing agency for advisors. So he left Ryan, I left with him. So I became director of content at Mineral Interactive, where I worked for a couple of years. And then uh, just decided to give it a shot on my own. So Three Crowns started in 2018. Just, you know, a winding road. There are even weird little backtracks and loops I didn't cover in that history. But uh, we, we started in 2018 and uh, and here we are. Four years later, we're, we're growing and, and having some fun, man. Nice. All right. Uh, th th just three crowns. Can you explain that? And then we're going to dive into your brain. Here. I can. I can. So uh, three crowns copywriting and marketing is the full name of the company. Three crowns marketing for short. The three crowns, um, the, the official uh, story, as my wife would like me to tell it, is that uh, it's one crown for each of our children. But the real story is that, uh, the less sentimental story, is that I was just doing some research on heritage and you know ancestry and stuff, and my family background is from Sweden. And the Swedish national emblem is three crowns because of, you know, a long ago king who united like the three territories whatever brought them into one and so sweden uses three crowns for everything like if you are watching winter olympics uh and, and you notice their hockey team or whatever they'll have the three three crowns emblem and so and so that's it it's just uh you know sandquist the whole swedish thing 
tying it back. Nice. That's cool. That makes a lot more sense. All right. Now, I get this question all the time, and I'm very excited to hear how you answered this or are going to answer this. Okay. Which is what makes a great financial advisor doesn't necessarily make them the greatest marketer. You know that as well as I do, even though that a lot of advisors think that they're great marketers. But then they get to the point where they realize they should outsource their marketing, right? Mm -hmm. How mm -hmm. outsourced can advisors have their marketing and have it still be successful and in their voice? So it's hard to put like a percentage on that, right? But you can't be 100% outsourced. Um, and I'll, I'll like talk philosophically for a second here about just how I view marketing for advisors. Like I think advisor marketing for me builds upon foundations of the people in a firm and the process of that firm. Okay. And the people, of the firm is really the biggest thing. And so, you know, the biggest marketing platforms and the, the most uh, used marketing platforms for advisors are kind of like canned content libraries. It's like, take this blog, post it, or we'll post all your social media for you. You just, you know, sign up and it starts going. And I do not agree with that philosophy. Like I think original content is essential. So I think that there's no way, whether you're an advisor or any business owner, you can't remove yourself fully from content creation because your personality is the underpinning of your entire firm's brand, right? So what we do when we work with advisors, the way that I phrase it, I guess I'm gonna get into percentages here. The way that I try to talk about it, like specifically for writing a blog, right? I try to tell people like, we need like 10% of your brain up front so that we like pull out the information, get the brain dump. So we know like, what is your perspective on the topic? And then we are like 80% in the middle to like actually write or create stuff for you. And then like you come back in at the end for the last 10% and make your edits and, you know, correct anything that we assumed, you know, and that you don't agree with. Right. So, you know, you have to be willing to have an opinion. I think that's the biggest thing. Like you have to be willing to say something different and, and, and own it. Right. Like it's just, it's boring if you're just pointing people to news articles all the time and not giving a take. So you've got to be at a certain point, whatever your involvement is, however much time you can give to it. The main thing is that you just have to be willing to put your name on something. I love those percentages. I thought that you were going to take that in a little different direction, which makes me uh, even happier because I knew you and I were philosophically aligned. But from a from an execution standpoint, we're even more aligned because our entire goal with our system very quickly we call it the rock star approach, right? The advisor preps, they get on the show, they do the gig, 27 minutes, drop the mic. We do everything until they have to, again, review the content and then also get it approved for compliance. Uh, if they're, if they, well, everybody really should do that, even if they're an RIA. Um, but, uh, you know, in the, but they, there right. is work on the back end and, um, and that's really, really important. So um, you, ours might be a little bit more labor intensive on the front end, but that, that you know, I probably say 15 to 20 on the front end uh, and then maybe five to 10 on the back end. But marketing is overwhelming, brother. You know this. I mean, you deal with advisors all the time and they're overwhelmed because, you know, they go to conferences. In fact, I've just it been, is. so I'm back on the conference circuit, which is fun and I missed it, right? I just missed humans, dude. I, you know, I just, you know, mm -hmm. anyway, I'm not in conference shape though, dude. I'll tell you that, that Me late too, night man. stuff and the drinking and the eating and the, the walking all over the place, dude, whoo. I got even just the even just the flying right oh. like i i get off the plane and i'm i'm tired now and i don't know if i just aged that much like during the <laughs> pandemic it's like we all aged yeah. 10 years yeah. in these two years yeah. that we were at home but i felt the same way like you and i met at market council That's right. last december mm -hmm. and uh, i was just dragging my man well, Travel is hard. That was the first conference for a lot of people. And uh, they really, a couple of people, <gasps> more than a couple of people, uh, enjoyed themselves just a smidge too much. Uh, <laughs> and uh, it was really funny interviewing people on day two. And they were like, oh, anyway. All right. So marketing, marketing, marketing. So let's get back to that. Yeah. Thanks for that little yeah. tangent there, dude. Um, how do you help advisors? Because again, so we were at Market Council Summit together. 
Yep. You know, you go to conferences. I was just at one called EWAS, uh, which is the Elite Wealth Advisor Symposium. Um, uh -huh. And, you know, there's all, always the people on stage, right, dude? You know, they're like, oh, these are the greatest advisors and hear how they're marketing. And then all of a sudden, every advisor is like, well, I'm going to try that. Mm -hmm. So they're always mm -hmm. chasing the shiny objects. How do you help them focus and make it so that it's not so overwhelming? So um, where I start everything with marketing um, is increasingly, increasingly, as I talk to people about their marketing, I try to strip away all the marketing jargon that we uh, have just piled on top of, of everything, right? Like everything is about you know, how many MQLs and SQLs and, you know, your marketing qualified leads, your sales qualified leads, all this stuff. I increasingly, I'm trying to just talk about things differently with advisors to keep our focus on the right point, which is what, the focus that I want us to keep is on the customer, on the client, right? So instead of like talking about, well, this is how many leads we got this month. Like I'm even trying to shift the way we talk and say, well, this is how many like new relationships we were able to start this month, right? Because marketing is this uh, communication broadcast. It's, you know, trying to mimic the one-to-one -one conversations you have to people, but with a one-to-many environment. So let's think about those as pre-relationships instead of leads. And so advisors need to, uh, more than anything, stop looking all the time at other advisors and look at their own clients. That's the big thing. Now. That's so good. Um, and because you, your clients will lead the way, okay, to everything that you need to do. If you like working with your clients, they will lead the way. Mm -hmm. um, and there are so many advisors who are afraid to niche down or specialize in something because everybody needs our help. You know, we're, we're broad. You know, if you're approaching retirement, we can help you, kind of thing. But uh, that's hard in marketing. Because what you end up doing is you end up playing to the average and playing to the mean. And when you play to the mean, you don't say anything that relevant to everybody. Um, like I think uh, Robert Sophia does a great job from Snappy Kraken of talking about how your marketing needs to be outstanding. It needs to be outside the norm. It needs to speak to fresh things. And you can only really do that if you are able to, in your mind, visualize and speak to a very, very specific person, right? Like... If I'm writing a website for Matt, mm -hmm. Matt, the podcaster, Matt, the advisor marketing guru, that's going to be an exceptionally different website. And if I'm writing a website for small business owners, mm -hmm. right? Like just think about how much different that copy and that message is going to be. Um, and so the, the phrase I keep coming back to for advisors and everything they do um, is conversations are your content. So listen to what your clients are telling you, listen to what the clients you like most are telling you, and then build everything else you do around their needs, what they're telling you they need, and just like parrot that back in your marketing communications to find more people like them who value the things that they value, who need the things that they need. And don't look anywhere else like stay laser focused. Yeah, man, uh, we are kindred spirits when every single solitary thing you said, Kirk and I had a presentation many years ago called Mick, <laughs> which was my ideal client. And it was that whole visualization, especially in the world of blogging, video, podcasting, any content creation, you have to be able to in your mind's eye know exactly who you're talking to. And we used to get to the point where it was like, not just demographics, but it was psychographics, you know, you were and and we would have people print out a picture of that person usually it was more of a caricature so that they when they were creating the content that's what their frame of mind was because if not you know the other thing too and, and johnny this is one of the reasons why i wanted to have you on the show uh is, is because uh, one I, i'm sure our audience is tired of hearing about niches because we talk about that all the time because everybody who comes on that's a successful marketing <laughs> person like yourself that's a huge focus right i could give you a laundry list of expert marketers like you who have that same opinion but but i want to quantify it very quickly so if you're trying to market to the masses you just entered into a world of competition where you have an enormous amount of competition the ken fishers the dave ram the Edelmans, the Raymond Jameses, the Ameriprises, Edward Joneses, right? Because you're trying to be like everybody else. But when you give yourself permission to unapologetically be yourself, 
then you have no competition. There is no other Johnny Sanquist out there, period. You are you. You are bringing something fundamentally unique and different to the marketing world. And I believe that advisors can do that too. Hey everybody, Matt here, just jumping in at something real quick. If you're struggling to define your niche, I have a free course that will help you solve that. It's called Creating Your Ideal Client Profile. By the time you're done, you will know exactly who you're talking to, so you can stop chasing non-ideal clients and start attracting people you'd love to work with. To start this course, join the Pod Rocket Academy for free at proudmouth.com forward slash episode 354. Now, after you set up all of this stuff, Johnny, and you've had these discussions and you're getting the advisor to focus, what are some of the other roadblocks? And, and I'd love for you to say, hey, here's the roadblock and here's how we get over it, because I want our audience to you know, get some of these problems potentially solved for them in their brains uh, so that when they do hire you or when they do hire somebody to help them create content, that whoever's on the receiving end, these things will be overcome. Okay, this is this is great timing. This is great timing. I just gave a talk to Napa about uh, um, overcoming content roadblocks. Nice. Uh, yeah, love this. Love this question. Um, <laughs> so I think there's two things that I would say here. Uh, the first is just um, it goes back to your first question about the the time that you need to spend on creation and how to manage your time. And then the second thing that I want to hit on is um, content distribution right of promoting content that you create so let's talk to the first one real quick so time um i mean if you're a diy advisor the the number one thing that i do that helps me and that i recommend to people do is just time block right like you just put it on your calendar like any other thing you do i do this for myself when i need to do stuff for three crowns it's like okay friday from two to five that is blocked. Nothing else happens except what I'm going to work on marketing on the company, right? I'm going to write an email. I'm going to write a blog. I'm going to do whatever. Okay. That's on the calendar. It's non-negotiable. So treat it as if you would treat a meeting with a client, like you are your own client. Treat it like that. Um, how we get, but I know that that's hard to find that time. Like stuff comes up. You're a small business owner. There's always something new. There's always something, there's some kind of problem you have to deal with. Um, the way that we try to help people get around that time block, uh, what I said earlier, like we're the we're the 80% in the middle team, right? Like 10% front, 10% at the end. So we done away with like having meetings for the most part with people when we want to gather content. We just send them a link and it it caps the response at five minutes max. So they either send us back an audio recording, answering our questions, a video recording, or type out some text, okay? So we don't need a half hour of their time, we need five minutes of their time. And that has worked smashingly. And so that's our process. You know, our process is give us five minutes up front, we'll create content, and then you give us your review at the end. And so that's how we solve internally with a process that we use to, to help people be able to create content and be involved without taking up a ton of their time every week. And then the other end of things, content distribution. So I know you feel this, um, you know, people have said for years, content is king. Content's not king. Content distribution is king. That's a good point of clarification. Right? So, nice. <laughs> so everybody wants to create content, but then they forget, um, that the real work is after the content's done, which we haven't, marketers have not done a good job of explaining this to people and talking to people about this. You know, all our message is all like, get the blogs out, right? Get the podcast out, make the video, do that. And then what, like there's a magic algorithm fairy that comes along and it's like, oh yeah, you're number one on Google. Congrats, you made a video. <laughs> like it's not how it works. Um, you have to have a plan and you have to have a, uh, a, a very defined process for how you're going to promote the content after it's done over time. So I want people's mindset to kind of shift. I'm like, create the content faster, however you need to, to do that, right? If it's time blocking or if it's just shorter content, whatever it is, spend an hour on the content and then spend five hours promoting it instead of five hours on the content and one hour promoting it. So, you know, if you think of your social media channels, um, you got Twitter, LinkedIn, Facebook, you probably have an email newsletter. Okay. So there's 
there's your base, right? Okay. If you've written a blog, pull the five favorite sentences you wrote in that blog and create five Twitter posts from them. If log into canva.com and create five Facebook images with those five favorite sentences that you wrote. In the LinkedIn, like you can write a crap ton on LinkedIn posts because they don't have the same character limit. So just pull pull out, you know, the the five things you recommend in that blog, summarize each point, make that into a LinkedIn post. Okay, right there. Now you've got, you know, 10 ways you're promoting that over time, right? So that's like maybe two weeks of social media promotion for you. You're going to put that content piece into your email. You're going to send it to prospects. You're going to send it to your customers. And, you know, if it's a blog you wrote, read through it and turn it into a podcast, you know, just expand on it. So I really want people's minds to kind of shift and, and think about the longevity of content because getting it out in front of the people who need it, like we said, you have to keep the customer focus. Um, you got to figure out how to get in front of people. And you can really only do that in this ephemeral digital age that we live in. If you make the effort to be annoying, like be annoying, like you think you're annoying because you tweeted about it five times. Nobody else saw it five times. Just, just give yourself the permission to be annoying and keep distributing the stuff that you make forever. Create once, distribute forever is my favorite phrase. Well, in, in Gary Vanderchuk, right, kind of the father of this new marketing technique, him and Seth Godin, I mean, that's what Gary talks about all the time. He shot one flip phone video, and then he'd hand that video to his team, and they turned it into everything that you just said. I want to add one component to this, because I think that there's something that um, is, is just kind of an and, not an or, to everything that you're saying here, which is when you share things, and in, in be annoying, what you also have to be prepared for is the social component to social media. So if somebody likes, shares, or comments on your post, you need to like, share, or comment on their response to your post. And the more engagement that you get, that's where the algorithm is dancing in the background because it's the engagement of the post. It's not the frequency of content or even the type of content. It's the engagement with the content that makes you win the marketing game. All right. What, what are you seeing that is like really working for your people right now? Man, this is going to uh, sound like a broken record, but um, ultra niche content, right? So um, for instance, we're working with an advisory firm and one of the advisors is, uh, specializes in international planning. So helping people with financial planning when they are moving out of America or they're moving to America. And I think that that's just a fantastic example of being able to speak incredibly specifically to what people's needs are. So, you know, she's got experience in that, uh, both in her personal life as well as professionally. And uh, I think that's the second part is that weaving your personal story into your professional life is where personal brand shines. And when you can display both angles of that, to prospects when you can show them, hey, I've got the professional expertise over here. I've also got this personal passion that's informing why I care about this so much. Brilliant. It, it's, it's, it's brilliant. And not everybody who's listening can necessarily tap into that, right? Like not everybody uh, started their firm because they're like, yeah, I lived a, a, abroad as a kid and now I'm super passionate about, you know, helping people figure out how to do this. But it doesn't have to be that that tied in like uh i've weirdly gotten a lot of conversations because i am uh, a a a very unabashed star wars fan and people you know i like i'll start off a prospect call and somebody be like yeah i like saw you tweet about like the mandalorian so we just started off like a discovery call by talking about star wars instead of anything else um and so i think you said earlier like living that auth authentic life uh in your digital presence um it just resonates man like um i think this this goes back to an earlier earlier statement you were saying about not competing against like the edward joneses right like we talk a lot about branding um it's in all likelihood you know your firm's brand can't really compete against 
Edward Jones or Goldman Sachs, but your personality can sure as hell compete against the Edward Jones branch rep. Okay. So that's where you've got to shine. That's where you have to just be human and, and put forward yourself because it's a personal business, man. It's a relationship business and people want to work with people that they trust and people that they know care about them. So put the focus there. That's where we're seeing the, the results come from. People want to feel taken care of, man. That's what it all comes down to. You lift up the hood and that's kind of an old, old marketing slash sales term or idea. You know, the more you lift up the hood and show people your engine, the stronger the connection points are. Because we live in a really commoditized industry with the products and services that we offer. What they want is they want that emotional connection. And by writing great content and distributing great content, there's the key, distributing it um, and, and then interacting with that content, all of the sudden, you are you have no competition and even better they come in pre-sold because they're like oh my god i just read this blog that you wrote and it really i really felt like you were speaking to me i don't need to know everything about who you are and what you do you know because advisors you know their discovery meetings it's the same crap over and over again well let me tell you why i got into business you know it's the same story you know um <laughs> you know and they and they just all of a sudden they're telling yeah. it over and over again and figuring out instead of figuring out how they can scale that um by the way uh if you go back to um may the 4th uh this past year you will see how much of a nerd uh and a geek i am around it uh let's just say lightsabers came into play in our post on social media um and um yeah i'm really proud of both of my I, my lightsabers anyway we'll talk about that later <laughs> um, all right love it if there is one place that an advisor should go to focus their time on social media is there a place that you say yep if I were, if an advisor just flat out asked me that question, here's where I tell them they should go. I don't have a singular place. <laughs> um, my answer to that, um, I'll give it in two parts. I was going to say, if I was going to rank things that I would think are really important, I would say, make sure you have a clean Google My Business listing. Make sure that you're um, on Facebook and make sure you're on LinkedIn, just demographic speaking. But when I talk about where you should be present online, I draw people a Venn diagram. One of the circles is uh, where your ideal clients spend their time online. So that requires a little bit, a little bit of research on your part. Honestly, not a ton. Like if you're um, a, a new advisor and you want to work with young couples, um, don't go on Facebook. Like it takes five minutes of searching to figure out that demographically speaking, your people are not spending a ton of time on Facebook anymore, you know? Yeah. And so similar for all the other channels, right? So just start there. Where are your people spending their time online? It might not even be those main social channels. It might be like, you know, Reddit or a Substack or something like that. Like we got to, you got to think more, more broadly than just these, these big massive platforms. Um, the other circle is um, what type of content do you like to create personally? Like if we go all the way back to how we started this conversation, like, um, and how you spend your time. If you don't like writing stuff, then don't write blogs, you know, do a video, do a podcast, something like that. And then that third circle is which platform do you like the most? And, and I think that's just as big as what content you like to do. Like you have to take your personal preferences into account. And so like, if you've got a good demographic split between LinkedIn and Twitter, but you like hate Twitter, then don't use Twitter right? Like don't force yourself to do stuff you don't like because you will not stick with it. It's just like anything else. And so in the middle of that little Venn diagram is where you should spend your time online. It's where your best relationships are likely to be found. It's which platform you like using personally, and it's the type of content that you like to create. And so find that middle intersection and that's where you should be. If somebody's listening to this and they're like, okay, I really like this Johnny dude. I'm a huge Star Wars fan. And on top of that, I like everything you're saying. <laughs> uh, who should reach out to you? What should they do? What sort of products and services do you offer? Let, let's let's give people the, the goods here on, on Three Crowns, please. Yeah, absolutely. So to be super clear, we work with advisors and we work with wealth tech firms and that's it. We are in the wealth management industry 100% of the time. So, you know, if you fit in either of those categories and you are looking for a new website or an outsourced marketing team, then we're a great fit for you. So threecrownsmarketing.com is our home base. 
And if you head there, you can directly schedule a meeting with me through my Calendly, the greatest invention of the 21st century. And, and we'll talk and our talk will just be laid back. It'll be, Hey, what are you struggling with? What do you need? If we can help, then let's do that. If not, then I'll try to point you to somebody who can. Just so everybody knows, that's exactly how all of our process works here too, right? Uh, we have, we've, I, this just happened to be last week. Somebody came in really interested in podcasting, uh, wasn't right fit for them. They're going to do video. That's it. They're going to do video. And they're like, well, do you do video? No, but we don't do video, uh, but I can direct you to a couple of people who do video. And we've had people who've come in and say, Hey, I really, I need somebody who writes blogs. All right. We have a list of people who we know that we've vetted that can write blogs. I think sales has really fundamentally changed Johnny. And I'm going to kind of end with this is most people today aren't trying to do a square peg in a round hole. Like I don't want to work with you if I'm not going to make you a happy customer because th then my life sucks and your life sucks and nobody's happy. And then I have to go try to find another one. I want to find the right fit just like you do as the advisor. You want to find the right fit for the right people who are going to take your advice and do what you want them to do with it. What Johnny and I do, what a lot of people in the marketing world do, there's a lot of us out there. Find somebody that you connect with, hire them, let them do their job, then all of a sudden, then real magic happens. And Johnny, we'll make sure that we have all of those links in our show notes. Uh, brother, I want to thank you for your time today. Thank you so much, Matt. This was a brilliant time. Super excited to talk to you. I had a lot of fun. All right, everybody, go to uh, threecrownsmarketing.com to make sure that you find out and connect with Johnny specifically. Do follow him on LinkedIn. He is there, and he's always posting really nice stuff. Uh, he's also on Twitter. We'll make sure we have the handles there for everybody, too. The big thing about all marketing is, is it has to work for you. And the Venn diagram that Johnny just talked about is probably one of the smartest visualizations I've heard. Finding out where your ideal client is, what medium you want to use, and then what social media platform you're most comfortable with. And that intersection point, that overlapping area is where you need to live. When you do that, it doesn't feel like marketing anymore. It just feels like something that you're doing because you love it, you're passionate about it, and you're talking to your peeps. And that's what all of us want to do. If you have not subscribed to the podcast, make sure you click that subscribe now button below. If you can give us a quick re rating on iTunes, we'd also appreciate it. And more importantly, if you know somebody in financial services who desperately needs some marketing assistance, please share this episode and other episodes with them. So for Johnny Sanquist, everybody at Three Crowns and all of us here at Probnoff, we'll see you on the other side of the mic very soon. Thanks for listening to the Top Advisor Marketing Podcast brought to you by Proudmouth. If you want to know more about how you can be your own loud, visit us at proudmouth.com and sign up for the Pod Rocket Academy. Through courses and office hours led by professional podcast producers and digital marketers, you will learn everything you need to know to become the trusted subject matter expert you were meant to be.